Yes guys, it's Jando. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a jump up track in 2024 from start to finish. All the elements, all the fundamentals about making um, a jump up track. Uh, so yeah, this is the track that we're going to be covering today. This is one of my most recent releases. I think I released it in my dub pack. Um, but it's a perfect example of some kind of Belgium jump up style of tune. Uh, and now I'm going to run you through how I made the track and uh, the elements and... Uh, fundamentals that go into making a jump up track so yeah this is the track <laughs> So yeah, let's get into uh, how I made this and what goes into a drummer bass track. Yes, guys, just before we jump into the video, if you're interested in copying preset packs, sample packs, mix and mastering services, and a bunch of other stuff, head over to our website, jandodmb.com. I've got all of my stuff on there now that I finally launched it. We've got the shop, which includes all of the preset packs, uh, sample packs, and it's also got mix and mastering services here. If you head over to the services tab, it will give you more information about the mix and mastering services, um, as well as what you need to do if you are going to buy them. Um, soon I'll put up all of my dub packs. My DMB masterclass will be up there very soon as well with a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so yeah, go over to jandodmb.com, check out all the content and nice one. So starting off with the drums, uh, well, let's just cover what we've got here. So we've got drums, build up, bass and effects all in separate tabs that we're going to go well, all in separate groups and we're going to go over all of them individually uh, but we're going to start off with the drums so depending on the style of jump up you're going to make obviously there's a lot of different styles so um here's two styles as an example <laughs> So yeah, obviously you've got two very different styles of, well not very different, but two pretty different styles of jump up there. Um, obviously one side of it's a lot heavier, which is what I've gone with this track. And then the other side is kind of more minimalistic, but still jump up grot. Um, so yeah, to make a kind of heavy jump up track, I'd say, is one of the key elements of the track, obviously, is the drums. So the drums here, let me just with this map you still hear me um i'm gonna go through the elements of this of this um drum kit so to start off with we've got yeah kicks i've layered two kicks here uh and the reason for that is to add like a bit of that um kind of foot like like kind of like perk underneath it and it just makes the kick a bit heavier so without it it's just this kick on its own and then with it, kind of like a percussion underneath it. Um, is this is just um, a normal kick that's uh, that I've sampled um, with, and it's got like percussion underneath the kick already. It's got some top end underneath it, so uh, without the EQ, and I've just rolled off more of those kind of low mid lows, uh, and then layered it with the kick. Nice heavy kick. And then we've got two heavy snares as well, so heavy jump up snare there, and then another one underneath it, uh, just to kind of beef out that mid range section to be fair, mid high section. The so super heavy, uh, super heavy snare to go with it as well. And then moving on, we've got our like tops and like percussion. So we've got this um, hi hat like kind of ride. Go underneath, and then we've got this little skippy hat, then another one underneath that, another one. This is kind of like this bottom one is like 
pure top uh pure tops it's, it's kind of like a skippy ride hat um i've taken down so here on on ableton anyway i'm not sure about any other door how you go about doing this but if you go into the um this section here and click on beats and then change this uh to the one arrow and then uh pull the like mess around with this so this is the original sample all going on and then pull it and pull it a lot tighter play around with the transients of the um of the sample so that's what i've done there just to because we've already got these rides here that are really airy and spacey so if we um pull the transients in on this one just keep like a nice skippy hi-hat pattern so we've got all of these together the tops keeping the flow of the track it's like high kind of high energy like skippy hats and top end um, and then all together the drums so yeah so obviously the the main element of the this kit uh this drum kit is the the kicks and the snares they're the, like the heaviest part of it and then by layering this um like hi-hats and percussion um we're, we're creating the skippiness and the, the flow of the drums from that um you can always like consider making sure that these samples as well um don't have like really kind of uh minimal like hi-hats in there like really I, i'm tr struggling to find the way to describe it but try and have it heavy as well that like you want there to be a lot going on within the percussion so we've got these two here that are filling out that top end more yeah that's the drums and then something else we can look at so obviously one of the key things about when you're playing with drums and you're if you're, especially if you're taking samples from sample packs and like one hits and loops and whatever like i've done with this um drum kit is not to over process um which is something most people don't consider um when a producer has put together a sample pack they've already heavily processed these samples so don't fall into the trap of over processing these samples like adding loads of compression to them and whatnot um but something that is good to do um here which is parallel compression and you can use it in different ways but i've set up this parallel compression uh, on a return track if i turn this up and we just listen to parallel compression by pulling the threshold all the way back and the makeup all the way up we can really really beef out the drums with this parallel compression kind of over distort over saturate the drums and then we can just we can mix that in very slightly with the with the drums just to add like a bit of beefiness to it if it's struggling for like if if the drums are struggling for like the heaviness you can do this little parallel compression obviously that's too much but you mix it in and play it by ear yeah you can beef up your drums like that as well moving on we're going to look at the bass now so obviously when it comes to jump up um something that obviously i'm not a massive jump up producer i don't i don't make a lot of jump up but it is kind of a new thing to me so making this has made me realize how much effort can go into the structure of the basses within a drum and bass uh, within a jump up track um yeah we're just gonna have a little look at this so it's not just the structure placement but overall structure of bases and how they work out so obviously these are the bases on their own so yeah we're going to start off with this melodic uh bass here so i've already covered this bass in a in the tutorial so i'm not going to go through any of the patches on um on these tracks uh, you can pretty much grab all of these patches on the jandodmb.com and various sample packs um but yeah so picking a like creating a melodic um like midi like this it, it can be tricky um but it, it's all about messing around obviously sticking to the key that you're working in and looking at scales and whatnot really helps obviously with um creating a scale like this so it's it's a lot of messing around to try and find something or find like a an idea that's not been done already there's a lot of these tracks that have 
melodic basses like this i mean master error toxin a suki especially they all make these like melodic -y bass bits at the very start of their drop and then <clears throat> four to eight bars in it goes into scat so trying to come up with something original can be difficult but it all comes with messing around and that's a massive part of production is messing around and uh trial and error basically so yeah uh mess around with this we've got this like obviously nice little melodic patch now The good thing with these patches as well is they can be adapted massively for variation like further on in the track you can do like many different things but you can change the patches up completely you can keep the um like the melodic uh, sorry the the midi and have it in the same pattern uh but change up the patch or change up the rates or there's so many different things so i'll, I'll move on to variation in a minute um so we've got this so we've done four bars <laughs> We've done two bars with the drums cut the drums and then we've gone up an octave i believe or we've gone up yeah no we've gone up in up in key as a little switch and it's like a little pre-drop so it's, it's kind of like a little fake drop but it's not it's, it's just part of the track um and then we go into scat like that so going transitioning from this first section of the drop you've got to have some kind of transition whether it's like a, a a fake drop and you go into like another build up or you just have like a really quick transition like i've done with this we've just got we're using this uh drum roll that i showed you before um to transition us into that kind of scat part of the drop <laughs> Moving on to the, the kind of scat part of the drop, calling it, we've got a few different things going on with the basses. So obviously we've got our main jump up bass. Uh, and then we've done a couple of different things to kind of spruce up the track a little bit and add more aggression to it. <clears throat> so the first hit here, rather than just having a straight 808, uh, sorry, rather than just having a straight sub, I've put in a, like a kicker 808 hits a bit harder on that first hit um and it just gives it more of an effect makes it makes the track kind of more aggressive overall um placement wise and structure was what i was saying before about these jump up tracks is a lot of the time you can work on the on the bar like directly on the bar or on the snare or half and half this is this is off off grid so we're with two little like i don't even know what this is this is like half a or a fifth of the bar or whatever it is um we're literally just off of it here so it doesn't quite hit on the kick but it's not quite hitting on the snare uh well it's, it's sorry it's hitting nowhere near the snare but it's not quite hitting on the kick you you just have that tiny amount of breathing room and it adds so much more flow to these tracks um something i didn't realize at the very start when i started trying to mess around with some like jump up stuff like this is it, it makes it so much better if we move this um here or like move if let's just say we move all of these like just onto the bar then you'll be able to hear the difference it's just it sounds so much like so so much different than move it off the bar. it's a crazy difference and it's the same um same for this as well this isn't quite hitting on the bar already because of because of the filters i've used and the effects it kind of delays serum a little bit um so this is actually hitting in the same place this is just off the just off the kick um but because of the like slight delay that my processing has caused um i have to have it on the bar but yeah it's the same thing so yeah structure wise little things like that make a massive difference within jump up uh, moving on, the next thing we're going to look at with the bass is this. So obviously we've got the pretty bog standard sub. Um, there's so much stuff you can do with subs in jump up tracks to make them like, make the tracks more aggressive and make them more like more unique compared to other jump up tracks um, and flow better. But we've used a pretty straightforward sub for this. 
Um, but the main thing is layering the sub with these uh, like noise, um, like distorted noise patches. It's not a it's like it's not a really noticeable thing within the tracks, but it kind of it's it's like little things add up, and this is one of them. So doing little things to your track multiple times um, really adds up, and this is one of the things like I just said. Uh, repeat myself a little bit, but yeah, this this is something really cool to do. So the patches are really straightforward. This is literally just a square wave with a noise filter on it, and then you just distort and saturate that. Um, patch and I've also EQ'd off, um, EQ'd off a lot of the low end and obviously the mids, so that we can have this kind of fuzz sitting on top of the bass. Um, but I just make sure that it follow like kind of follows if the notes change within the basses and whatnot. Um, it kind of follows the sub uh, like exactly. So yeah, that's pretty much all the basis to cover. We're just going to have a look at the variation that you can do with some of these patches. So we have a variation here. So like I was talking about before, with um, like adding variation to these melodic patches, it's really easy to do. Um, so this is uh, a variation in the rate. And it, it again, it just changes the style of the tune. If you continue to do the like kind of copy and paste every eight to 16 bars is the track is going to sound so samey so little like variation bits like this help the track flow better and not be so boring um it, it's a, a nice little switch up for a listener and it they obviously go down well in like in a rave as well so we've got a little bit of variation on this and then we've just changed around the um structure of the basses here to again add a little bit more variation <laughs> Yeah, we've added a little bit here. And that just helps the track flow better. It, variation is such a key thing within drum and bass in general, especially in jump up, because there's so much going on already. If you just if I just kept copying and pasting every single time, it's gonna sound so samey, so boring. So yeah, variation is key. It doesn't need to be a massive amount like there. That's just a change in rate and it changing the structure slightly. Um, but yeah, the best thing you can do is listen to a lot of jump, like jump up tracks from various artists and just listen to all of the, the kind of unique things that they're doing, um, in their tracks to add variation. Next up is the FX. So there's nothing crazy going on with this. It's a lot of sweeps, rises, and, um, like we've got a little impact here as well, but there, again, nothing crazy going on. Little impacts here just for effect. And then we've got sweeps. And these are in like the transition area. So we're transitioning from um, intro to build up here. This is where the build up starts. And to transition into that, we've got a nice little sweep, we've got some impact, and then we've got this um, like down 808. Just helps with uh, the transitioning. And make it, again, it's just adding like that variation and whatnot to the tracks, just keeping the track flowing nicely. Um, and then a lot of these are just risers. So little rises in places and then have that I'm having that throughout the track in different places just to keep the track going so when we have like a a breakdown just before so let's say I have the first 16 of the drop and then in we're going to say in here so the last four bars of that sorry uh, yeah the last four bars here we're going to start having like a little bit of a come down and like airing the track out a little bit, especially here. So this is after the first 32, when we're going to transition into the next 32 of the drop, we're going to have like a little come down from the drop. So kind of like a rebuild up again, just before the, this next section. And then in that section, we're going to start dropping kind of rises and um, impacts and down rises and whatnot. <laughs> So that people know something's coming they know that there's a new transition coming um and stuff like this um which a lot again a lot of people might not consider in their tracks is it's really really helpful for a dj um if you've got a track that's got no like 
there's nothing telling you there's a transition coming um i know if, i've got a few tracks on my usb that's exactly like that there's loads of variation in the track but there's no like you cannot tell there's a there's a transition coming so if you uh messing around with different cdjs loading up new tracks and you're not concentrating you can get lost really easily um so yeah stuff like this a it helps the track and b it helps the dj <laughs> yeah but that is that's pretty much it for this track i mean it's not i'll be honest not a whole lot of effort went into the, into this track at all um it was just messing around and experimenting with a little bit of jump up stuff like i said before it's not really my jump up's not really my forte but it's good to experiment with different subgenres of b and b and move out of your comfort zone a bit um definitely helps to further your production but yeah um I'll do some more videos like these uh, with different kind of subgenres or whatever, um, like rollers and maybe some jungle tracks and stuff like that, and how they're structured very, very differently to each other. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. Nice one.